Yo, what is up guys, Ghost here, and today I've got some new details on Update 5.2, which we'll be releasing next week, I believe. So the full patch notes will be available tomorrow, and we'll be covering all of that then, of course, but for now, we have gotten some information on some very interesting changes, as um, I'm sure you guys will have guessed from the title of this video. So we're going to get into all of that. But before we get started, if you guys do enjoy the content here on the channel, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe, of course, for more videos so you don't miss out on uh, all that good Battlefield stuff. We are coming up on 47,000 subs. It doesn't cost you anything to subscribe, so anybody who does that has my appreciation. Thank you for that. Okay, let's begin with the elephant in the room here, shall we? And I apologize in advance if I get a little bit heated here. So yesterday, DICE posted this statement on Twitter, or X, or whatever it's called now, saying the following. We've heard you loud and clear. You want the ability to define who you play with in a squad on Battlefield 2042. Arriving as part of update 5.2, squad leaders will have the ability to lock, unlock, and remove players from their squads. Squad leader not up to the task? If your requests go unanswered, leadership duties may be taken from them. Stay tuned for full update notes on 5.2 soon. Now, if you recall when DICE initially announced the squad management system, these features were not included. And DICE really went like out of their way to specifically make sure that they didn't mention anything about the lack of those features. They didn't confront this during the podcast when they first mentioned the feature. They didn't mention it in the dev blog. And I'm convinced that that is because they knew that people wanted to be able to kick players, unlock squads, and they knew they would be upset about those features not being in there. But they thought that if they kept quiet about it, nobody would notice or the noise would simply die down. And that's largely the reason that I, of course, ended up getting embroiled in that huge drama that I'm sure many of you know about. Now, eventually, it had to be brought up because they actually cocked it up themselves by posting the wrong video to their Twitter timeline, which actually showed the kick and ban features. And then they had to explain to people that those features actually weren't going to be coming after all. Now, as you may remember, this then led to a pretty significant backlash from the core Battlefield community, and rightfully so. You know, how clueless do you have to be to finally bring one of the core features of a Battlefield game to the player base about two years too late, and then not even have the proper set of features within it? And so now, because we stood up and we shouted from the rooftops about it, DICE thought, okay, you know, hang on a minute, maybe we should add this in. And that's, of course, exactly what they're doing. Now, don't get me wrong here, I think this is great that they are adding it in, and I'm not trying to piss on anybody's bonfire, and at the end of the day, we got our way. That's good. But the way they're wording this, saying, you know, we've heard you loud and clear, as if they always listen to what we want, is, I think, pretty disingenuous. The truth of the matter is they knew full well what we wanted long ago. They thought they could get away with not putting it in, probably due to EA, you know, trying to fit into this new world mold where you're just not allowed to hurt anybody's feelings anymore. And they were wrong and they were forced to act. And now they're sort of playing it off like, hey, see, we do listen to the community. And it's just not the first time, right? They tried to tell us that we didn't need deaths on the scoreboard. Do you remember that when they first brought out the iteration of the scoreboard, the new and improved scoreboard that wasn't with the game on release, it actually had no deaths on there. And everybody started, of course, to kick up a fuss and say, you know, what? No deaths, dice? What the hell? And then they went ahead and added deaths in. Same thing happened with all chat. I think DICE should really learn something from this. That whole entire drama around squad management could have been completely avoided had they simply listened to what we wanted in the first place. But more importantly, it also goes to show that if we hadn't kicked and screamed about it, nothing would have been done. I just, you know, I don't get their pushback on issues like this where the vast majority of the player base is in agreement. But I digress. Anyway, moving on to some good news here. Uh, as you might have guessed, Update 5.2 will bring with it the long-awaited Hourglass remake, which is, of course, the final remake for the game. So I'm certainly looking forward to giving that one a try. It also begs the question of, you know, will we be getting two maps come Season 6 instead of one? My guess there is 
no, and uh, you can call me a pessimistic old git if you'd like, but well, I will gladly eat my hat if I'm wrong. In addition to that, we're also getting the squad orders feature where you will now be rewarded with points for carrying out your squad leader's orders. We're also going to be getting the next round of vault weapon changes. So this time there'll be attachments and skins added in for the SMGs and the LMGs. So I'm definitely going to be on the lookout for those. Just like with the ACWR and the MTAR in update 5.0, we may now have some new vault LMGs and SMGs that could potentially be very powerful. Aside from that, we could even be getting a new vault weapon or two, no official word on that yet. And other than that, I'm sure there will be some interesting gameplay tweaks and changes and the usual batch of stealth changes that we'll have to discover for ourselves. Now, just before we wrap this one up here, there is one final thing that I want to go over that I haven't covered yet. And nobody really knows what's going on with this or why. But about a week ago, DICE actually vaulted or disabled the 20mm flat cannon on the LATV-4, saying that it had been disabled until further notice, pending further balance changes. So they say, expect to see these items reappear in a future update once we've addressed the above issues regarding them. The 20mm flak pod for the hovercraft is also temporarily disabled and will return in a future update once balancing concerns have been addressed. So even though this weapon has received a significant nerf to its range. I believe it went down from 400 meters to 200 meters. That has apparently not been sufficient. However, I have also noticed that what people are now doing because of the shorter range is they're setting up the LATV4 at exactly 200 meters outside of a breakthrough objective, for example, and then they're spamming that objective with the flak cannon. And that way the flak will explode at exactly 200 meters and it does 10 damage to everybody per hit. Now, obviously, it fires pretty fast, so, you know, you're going to clock up some kills rather fast in that scenario. On the other hand, there is also a sound bug with the flat cannons that does stop them giving any audible feedback to the pilot that's being hit by them. And so usually you just sort of sit there and die and you have no idea that you're actually being shot at all. So they could be vaulting it to sort of look into that matter a little bit more deeply. But it's been a week at this point and we haven't heard anything about it. So, you know, I am a little bit curious as to what the problem with them could be. Anywho, guys, that is about going to do it for this video. As always, if you enjoyed, leave a like down below and of course subscribe for more Battlefield content. Have a good one, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.